Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today, we're going to talk about time series transformations with Arrow Compute Engine. My name is Li Jing. First of all, I need to clarify that this talk is not going to be providing any financial um, advices or investment advices. This is because I work for a financial advisory firm, and I have to clarify that. So let's get to the actual talk. My name is Li Jing. I am a software engineer at Two Sigma. In, for the past five years, I've been working a lot on data analytics platform for the company, especially to process financial um, data. And my focus is on time series because uh, of course, a lot of the financial data are time series. And that's why um, that what this talk is about. So to give a quick overview of the talk, uh, we're going to split the talk into three parts. First is for background knowledge. I'm going to talk about what is time series data transformation. Um, and then we're going to talk about why I think Arrow is a good fit for uh, handling um, time series data transformation. And, last, and lastly, we're going to talk about what we're doing to actually make, make that happen in Arrow Compute Engine. Um, as a note here, this talk assumes using Python as the user language. That's just because um, Python is a language we use a lot in, in, in our company, um, but a lot of the concepts here also applies to uh, other languages. With that, let's go into the part one. Time series data. Here we define time series data as a, a, a class of um, tabular data. So these are regular data you usually um, you, uh, and analyze with uh, things like pandas. So it has rows and columns. Each row corresponds to a record, and each column corresponds to a specific attribute of the record. Um, for time series data, each row is associated with a timestamp. And, uh, and very importantly, the rows are in the table are ordered by the timestamp. It is usually uh, one or more in, uh, index dimension in addition to time. For example, if you're looking at um, stock prices for all the stocks, in New York Stock Exchange, in addition to uh, the time of each, each price, you also have the stock ID in each price. And in reality, we usually um, deal with um, tables of this sort of shape. So next, I want to talk about the meaning of um, timestamps um, in time series data. This is, this is a quite, um, quite important for time series forecast. Um, the timestamp in, in the row or for the record are usually um, the timestamp when you can observe the, the values in the row um, without picking the future. This, this is important because usually in time series forecasting, we are going to use data we can observe uh, in the past or at the moment to predict um, data in the, in the future. And, without, uh, and we have to rely on timestamp for that, of, of course. And without this, um, being very um, careful about um, the meaning of timestamps, and uh, you can easily introduce a look ahead bias by accidentally include a data you cannot observe at a specific time um, in, in, into the record. Next, we're going to talk about time series operations. Time series operations actually. Um, as we see in, in, our, in our actual use cases, it's not that much than um, just the regular SQL operations. Here, we're going to talk about three types of um, kind of unique time series operations. First is as of join, then is time order aggregation and time order window. We're gonna focus on the, the first two. As of join is a specific join where it's joined by time. And uh, the interesting thing here, here is as of join joins each row um, with, a row in the other other table that has uh, the timestamp that is smaller than the current row. For example, like the closest row that has the timestamp that's smaller than uh, the current row. For example, here we have the uh, we have one table on the top here has two rows, and we're trying to join another table at the bottom with it. And as you can see, the join results are as shown in, um, on the right side, and we we actually just find. Um, the closest row in the past to, to, to join with the uh, each row on the left. This is uh, kind of look, uh, kind of reflect back on the meaning of timestamp. This means we're not including any future information into our record. 
by doing acid joint. Um, next, I'll talk about time order aggregation. This is also a pretty typical operation to do. You usually have your original series in, uh, in a low frequency. For example, here we have original series in, in per minute, and you want to aggregate into a, ser a time series of higher frequency. This is also, also sometimes called interpolization. For example, here the high frequency is five minutes. So basically we want to group uh, the original series by the, uh, the new frequency and aggregate them. And how this is usually done is you will map the original um, frequency onto the, the, uh, the lower frequency and then aggregate it on, on it. And one interesting thing to note here is um, this mapping here does not change the ordering of the data. So if your original series is already time ordered, if you map, map it onto a lower frequency, it's still time ordered, which is pretty important. A lot of the operation in time series uh, uh, transformations, they preserve order. So next, let's talk about um, time series and the error compute engine. So first, I want to kind of talk about this concept of string processing. In computer science, string processing is a paradigm where we use data streams or sequence of events in time as the central input and output objects of computation. And streaming proce string processing and time series, they actually are very good a match um, of each other. The reason for that is by nature, um, string processing only process data around the current time point. So in a streaming process engine, it's rare um, that you will just go over the place in the time timeline and look at very far in the future, sorry, very far in the past or very far in the future. It's usually centered around the time standard processing. And time series operation usually only need the data around uh, the current time point. For example, if you think about as of join, uh, for each left row, you of course you have a certain look back of uh, what's the furthest um, row you want to include on the right side of the table. And that, that is kind of your range around the, the current time point. Same as um, all the aggregations for each interval, for each um, value in the lower frequency, you only want to look up until the, the previous um, lower frequency point. So that, that's, that, that's why it makes it uh, a good match for each other because the, um, the restriction of the computation actually meet, uh, meets uh, very well with the, uh, with the requirements of, of the problem. So, and uh, our computer engine is a stream processing engine. Our computer engine is a, basically is centered around uh, execution node. Each execution node will take a stream of record batches and output another stream of record batches. So this, um, this execution model of wireless compute engine um, fits really well for processing time series data. And that's why we, we kind of think uh, we actually started the, the project. Here is just an example of a execution graph in our compute. Uh, it's kind of uh, similar to any other really um, a query query graph in other any systems. You have nodes, which uh, in this case represents execution node, and you have arrow, which um, represents a flow, a stream of record batches. And uh, the second thing I want to talk about here is um, the two aspect of a time series transformation. So far, we talk about uh, join group by windows. These are what I, I, I call them a relational aspect or uh, you define how you want to apply the transformation. Uh, row wise is just a simple one. A lot of for example, projection is a row wise operation. Um, however, there's another aspect of the transformation, what I call a quantitative aspect or what are you going to apply on the data. These uh, can be simple ones such as arithmetic, uh, simple arithmetic, right? I want to compute a uh, a main over the window or on the compute a sum of the group, etc. But um, in the time series operations we see in, in, in our case, a lot of times you want the more complicated stuff. For example, uh, when, one function we use a lot is to, to map values uh, in a row is cumulative distribution function. This is um, given, a dis, um, given a distribution and a value, what's the probability of this value um, for us uh, you know, uh, well, uh, a value in the distribution is smaller than a uh, given value. And the PPF is kind of a reverse function of CDF. Um, the point here is uh, these, these operations, they're usually not natively support, supported by a, a SQL-like query engine. So a SQL, 
things like Spark or Pandas, they usually come with um, some kind of basic arithmetic or um, quantiles and ranking, but it doesn't really go very far beyond uh, um, more complicated ma mathematical um, computations, which are usually supported by, by other libraries. To give kind of more concrete example here, um, and by the way, the, the reason that I bring up the quantitative aspect is because I think UDF, Python UDF support is also um, a key part of time series transformations. To give a more concrete example, here this is a, a some code that we uh, took from some existing use cases. The code doesn't run on you know Arrow or or uh, uh, any open source software, but just to give an idea. Um, here we, um, the thing we want to focus here is the function calculate weight in the middle. This function itself is written with um, NumPy, NumPy functions. Um, NumPy, function, NumPy is a library that, that is very good at handling um, numerics computation in Python. And this is a way that a lot of Python users are familiar with to express this sort of formula. So this formula you know, takes some clip the value, does some power, does some division to calculate, to calculate weights. And this is a very natural way to express this. And with if we can uh, express this as user defined function and uh, plug that in into the error compute, then you can really get a bad, best of both worlds. You, you get the uh, performant uh, expressive relational operators in error compute engine, but you also get the feature for UDF to express your quantitative aspect using more of the uh, na native Python libraries such as NumPy. Okay, uh, next we're gonna talk about part three is what we've done and what's our plan for the future. Um, so our big goal here is really, um, not surprisingly, improving the time series scalability in, in error compute. And there are a couple of things I think are really important that we're focusing on right now to do it. First is adding time series APIs for um, the time series um, relational operations we're talking about. For example, as of join, group by uh, order group bys, and the time order window operations are, are a good candidates to, to add. And the second is, of course, with the API, uh, with the API we also want to add um, implementations. These goes uh, hand in hand. Um, next is support on order record badges. This is something I haven't really talked too much about. Um, but basically, in Arrow, you have these a stream of record badges um, between execution node. However, on the stream record badges does not guarantee that data um, pass through these streams are ordered. And this is a, um, if, if we um, look back on the definition of stream processing, it's actually pretty important that um, the data is, ar ar is arriving in time. And that's why I want to ask, well, as, as support to Arrow Engine to be able to um, express that and be able to enforce the ordering of data uh, though, um, in, in, the, in those batches. And, Lastly, it's about the Python, uh, it's about the, the interfaces and, and Python, which might not apply to other languages, but in Python, we want a user to interface the system with a Python native API rather than, uh, of course, C++. And here, um, the Arrow, Arrow team is already, invest, is already uh, working on um, integrating IBIS with Substray, which is basically a Substray as a, a language neutral intermediate representation of a query plan and IBIS is a Python front end that has a pandas-like API. So with these two, uh, we can turn the Python code into substrate format and the C++ engine can already consume the substrate format. So it's, it's quite nice. But we just also want to add, sub, uh, add support for the time series APIs in this layer as well. Last but not least, um, like, like I mentioned um, before, Python UDFs is pretty important for a lot of the time series operations. So we definitely want to support that as well. The Arrow team, again, has already added some support for Python UDFs, which is, which is quite cool. And we're working on just passing that through uh, all the way through the IBIS and substrate layer. And uh, here are a few things that are occurring in progress. We have a PR open for uh, implementing as of join. And that's close to be merged. And we have a couple of other PR around adding UDF support um, via IBIS and Substrate. And of course, in the future, we um, this is probably going to be carried uh, across um, towards towards the end of the year. Um, we actively want uh, we want to actively work on it. These include time order aggregations, time order windows, the other two important um, time series operations, and finally the order record batch support. So with that. Um, 
I will end, end this talk and uh, happy to chat more about this uh, afterwards. Thank you.